lot of people in America today um, are go going through great trials. The, uh, the phrase uh, in this economy is a very overused phrase uh, for what's going on. Uh, the economy is as low as it's been since 1930, since the Great Depression. Um, unemployment is high. I'm actually unemployed myself. Um, and uh, the normal comforts that we enjoy for years, um, we have to cut back on. Everybody basically has been affected by the, the financial situation <coughs> in our country. But uh, to be honest with you, that's not the focus of the, the message. This is something that I want to speak about because I know that that's when we think of trials, especially now in America, that's the first thing that comes to people's mind. You know, people struggling financially and not you know, having jobs every day in the news. That's all you hear. Uh, but as Christians, we don't have to be really weighed down by circumstances like that only because um, honestly, we our faith doesn't hinge on something that's, that's that. Um, I, I guess finite. Um, also, um, we have stronger a stronger fight, which is every day battling our flesh, every day battling um, the enemy um, when it comes to the the internal fight. And actually, um, trials like that should be a, a, an, an expected thing for a Christian. Uh, the word actually says in um, Acts fourteen twenty two that we must do many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Also in Philippians 1.29, for to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe, but also to suffer for his sake. Not to trivialize people going through financial situations, but our, our life is, is a struggle every day. Um, and, and also, you know, just when it comes to walking with the Lord, walking close with the Lord, um, and, and having to strive for Him and, and battle our flesh. Um, the importance, the importance is um, when it comes to the world, it's the difference is that we have trust in the sovereign God. When, when things go bad, like in the world, things go bad, it's open-ended. They, they have to trust in themselves. They have to trust in what they're doing um, or what they can do to get the situation done or, or, or resolved for us. Um, we have a great hope where we have a sovereign Lord. Then when something goes down, when it, when it comes to trials, when it comes to even um, separation, distance between him, we know that, okay, God has got us. In light of that truth, then we know that the Lord has got us um, and, who, and as Christians has brought us near to him through the cross. <coughs> And as we walk with him and he's conforming us into his image, uh, like I said before, there's times so where God can feel silent or uh, non-existent altogether. Um, at those times, and, and I think those times as a Christian, because that we all go through that. We all go through that at times in our life, at seasons in our life. And I think at those times in your life, you can think, you, that is what's going to show, okay, where's my faith at? Where's my trust at? When, when things don't seem so tangible, when, when God's um, hand doesn't seem so, I can see his Holy Spirit move, I, when, it, when it's just, okay, God, I can't see you, I do not know where you're at. Those are times when we, we can do some self-inspection um, and, and ask ourselves questions like, uh, in, that time, in those times, how do I respond? Looking back and even in the future, how will I respond? How do you think you would respond? Or do I actually trust God's word? <clears throat> um, our three other questions are, uh, what does it mean to trust God? Because we, as Christians, we use that type of stuff all the time. You know, oh, we, you trust the Lord, give it to the Lord. But truly, what does it mean to trust the Lord? Um, what does that trust look like in a person or, it, or in believers or what does it not look like? And I believe in Numbers 21, uh, 4 through 9, that, that qu those questions are answered. And um, it's just who, how, how, does it, how do I trust God? What does this look like? And, we can, and, it, and it's very tangible in that scripture. Um, so if you guys can turn there, um, if you're not already there.
just some background in the book. Uh, Numbers is is a the historical account of, of Moses and the people of God um, after God uh, gave let them go out of um, Egypt and uh, they're on their way to the Promised Land. Uh, he's brought them out um, through ridiculous miracles. God has shown Himself and and uh, pillar of fire leading them through um, through the desert. Um, as they're they're going through uh, through the desert. Now, now unbelief comes, um, namely, and most I get I think maybe mostly displayed in Numbers 14, where um, if you guys don't know or if you do know uh, the the story of uh, Jacob and not Jacob, I'm sorry, Joshua and Caleb, uh, they're going through. Uh, they're about to go into the Promised Land. Um, they see the Canaanites. They send out the twelve spies. They come back. Ten of them have a bad report. Two of them. <coughs> Two of them are, you know, we can take the land. Um, through that, God refuses to let them in, let the whole nation of Israel into the promised land at that time because of their unbelief and not trusting in the Lord's character. And through that whole time, He's bringing them through the desert. He's showing them His character. He does. He doesn't come back. He doesn't go back on His promises. He stays faithful even when they're sinning. He He gives them grace and um, and lets them, you know, continues to be with them and keeps His covenant in being with Israel. Um, God declared to this generation, look, you're going to be um, in 40 years in the wilderness. And Numbers 21, and, we're, and you know, you think about it, it's 30 chapters, 30 plus chapters. Um, Numbers 21 is in the midst of that. So I'm going to go ahead and read the, uh, the scripture, and then we'll get into it. Numbers 21, starting at verse 4 to verse 9. Then they set from the mountain of Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient because of the journey. And the people spoke against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food, no water, and we loathe, loathe this miserable food. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. So the people came to Moses and said, "We have sinned, because we have spoken against the Lord, and you. Intercede with the Lord, that He may remove the serpents from us." And Moses interceded for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, "Make a fiery serpent, and set it on a standard, and it shall become." And it shall become about that everyone who is bitten, who, yeah, who is bitten, when he looks at it, he shall live. And Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on the standard. And it came about that it was a serpent. It came about if a serpent bit any man, when he looked to the bronze serpent, he lived. Okay. As I get into this, I'm going to come out front and, and tell you so you can keep your mind focused and, and know where I'm going so I'm not all over the place if you're taking notes. Um, if not, it, it, this will also help you. I'm going to split the, the scripture, these six verses, into three sections. First section is uh, verses four through five. I call that the sin of the people or the rejection. Um, verses six and seven is the discipline of the Lord. And um, eight and nine is the remedy. So as, as we go through it, we're going to talk about verses four and five, six and seven, and then eight and nine. And then um, conclusion. So 